Hi, I'm Lady Boom Boom from Canada's Drag Race Season 3 and welcome to Extra Magazine After the Sachet. Lady Boom Boom, thank you for joining me. Look at you today. You are full French femme fatale. How dare you with that outfit? R.I.P., but it was an incredible run. I really enjoyed you on the show. I thought you brought the fashion, you brought the art, and you were just an exquisite competitor. You said this week that the drama was a little high school for you. Did things get a little too dramatic in the workroom for your taste? Yeah, honestly, you have to understand at this point that, like, we're shooting all day long, so we're in drag, like, from morning to, like, late night. And it was around like I think midnight and the only thing that was keeping us away from taking off our garment and our makeup off was Versalicious. And I really wanted to go sleep at the hotel. So yeah, I shut it down real quick. If complaining was a talent, you finally be talented. You have got a degree in fashion design. I want to know which of your season three sisters has the best fashion sense? I was very impressed about Giselle looks, but like Giselle is like such an anxious person that like looking at her garment, she was so ready. Like she told me that she got some stuff from the designer, but she had, she had to add some more stuff. And so I, I feel like her wardrobe was pretty complete. Yeah. And I saw some of the look that are coming up and now you are gender fluid. I want to know how has your practice as a drag artist informed your own understanding of your own gender? And when I first started, I, I had like two specific wardrobe, one for me and like one for once I'm in drag. But now everything like kind of shift and I just wear what I want when I, I want to. And it actually make me feel more powerful just being able to express myself because like even when I was very shy in high school the best thing for me like to communicate with others was wear through my look so yeah becoming drag queen really helped my fashion sense now for the snatch game you did a Canadian drag icon for those who don't know tell them a little bit about who Mado is Mado is actually the proud owner of Cabaret Mado in uh, Montreal. She's like a drag pioneer here in Montreal, in, in Quebec, in fact. I loved seeing that there was some drag history and some reverence for the drag that came before what we see today in the age of RuPaul's Drag Race, that you brought some of that in. And that look was perfection. It was giving old school Canadian drag. Yeah, the look was everything, the performance not so much. But yeah, I love like to pay homage to the drag queen that came before us. Like for example, in the episode number two when I was wearing the big brown gown. And this was made by an older drag queen. And she's now like quitting drag, but I actually went to her apartment and bought a lot of stuff from her. And this gorgeous piece, like, I didn't care how much it was. I was like, I need to leave with this in my bag. And I did. And, like, it's nice to to have new stuff made and to make new costume. But, like, one of the older costumes, when they're very, like, well-made, they'll last forever. And this one is just, like... I love it. We have seen fashion design, we've seen runway modeling. What is coming up next for you? Is there big fashion in your future? Watch me on Instagram and hopefully I'll be performing in a city near you. Like, I just were t talking to my manager yesterday and he was talking to me about like doing something maybe in New York City, things like that. So yeah, I'm very excited. All right, well, wonderful. I can't wait to see you on the stage. Thanks for watching Extra After the Sachet. Make sure to tune in my Instagram at It's Lady Boom Boom to catch me in the show near your city.